a legend was born deep in the heart of Britain's industrial north during the chaos of World War II. The Avril Lancaster, the heavy bomber that served as the foundation of the Royal Air Force's Bomber Command, was more than a machine. It represented resilience, ingenuity, and sacrifice. Today, we'll look at the factories where this iconic aircraft was built, how it was made, and the critical role it played in turning the tide of the war. The story of the Avril Lancaster begins with a failure. In the late 1930s, the Royal Air Force needed a new heavy bomber to replace its aging fleet. A.V. Rowan Company, or Avro, designed the twin-engine Manchester, but it suffered from underpowered engines and reliability issues. Rather than abandoning the project, Avro's chief designer, Roy Chadwick, reimagined the Manchester with four Rolls-Royce Merlin engines, the same power plants used in the Spitfire and Hurricane. The result was the Lancaster, which first flew in January 1941. This beast of a bomber could transport massive payloads, fly long distances, and withstand harsh conditions, making it a game-changer for the RAF in the war. Building the Lancaster was a massive undertaking driven by Britain's wartime industrial machine. The main production hub was located at Avro's factory in Chatterton, near Manchester, with additional assembly lines in Woodford, Cheshire, and Yorkshire. Shadow factories, government-funded plants run by automakers such as Austin and Vickers, also produced Lancasters to meet demand. By 1945, over 7,000 Lancasters had been built in the UK and Canada, with factories working around the clock. Thousands of workers, including many women known as Lancaster ladies, assembled components in sprawling assembly halls. Raw materials such as aluminum, steel, and plywood arrived by rail, and skilled workers operated lathes, presses, and rivet guns while under constant threat of Luftwaffe bombing. To boost morale, workers often inscribed personal messages inside aircraft, reminding them of the human spirit behind the war machine. So, how do you build a 70-foot-long bomber that can carry 22,000 pounds of explosives? The Lancaster's construction was a showcase for precision engineering. The airframe was constructed from lightweight aluminum and shaped into a monocoque fuselage for strength and aerodynamics. The iconic elliptical wings, which measure 102 feet, were assembled in sections, with spars and ribs riveted together to support the four Merlin engines. Each engine produced over 1,400 horsepower and was meticulously installed by teams of mechanics, who worked around the clock to keep up with the high demand. The Lancaster's defining feature was its cavernous bomb bay, which was 33 feet long and could carry anything from general purpose bombs to the massive 22,000-pound Grand Slam. Electrical systems, hydraulic landing gear, and defensive turrets equipped with machine guns were equipped with pinpoint accuracy. Quality control was strict. Every bolt, weld, and wire was examined to ensure that the aircraft could withstand the harsh conditions of war. A single Lancaster bomber required approximately 60,000 man-hours to complete, from raw materials to finished product. The Lancaster had a monumental impact on World War II. It entered service in 1942 and became the backbone of the RAF Bomber Command's strategic bombing campaign against Nazi Germany. Lancasters flew more than 155,000 sorties, dropping nearly 600,000 tons of bombs on enemy targets, including factories, railways, U-boat pens, and cities such as Hamburg and Dresden. Its versatility shone through in precision raids, such as the well-known Dam Busters mission of 1943, where they used bouncing bombs to breach German dams, crippling their industrial heartland. But the Lancaster's success came at a high cost. Over 3,200 Lancasters were lost in combat, and over 21,000 aircrew died. Flying at night, through flak and enemy fighters, Lancaster crews faced odds against survival. The Lancaster aircraft became a symbol of defiance against tyranny due to its reliability and brave pilots. The Avril Lancaster was not simply built in factories, it was forged in the hearts of those who designed, assembled, and flew it. From the bustling assembly lines of Chatterton to the skies above Europe, the Lancaster carried a nation's hopes during wartime. Its legacy lives on in the few surviving aircraft, such as those housed in museums in Duxford and Ontario, which serve as reminders of the ingenuity and sacrifice that shaped history. Thank you for joining me on this journey through the history of the Lancaster. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe, and ring the bell for more deep dives into aviation history.